Well, so up until now, we have seen the demand for labor side. That is uh, just to recapitulate. This was the demand curve for labor, which we have seen in the last lecture. So a profit maximizing firm will be hiring input up to the point where the cost of hiring an additional input is equal to the value of marginal product. So where the cost of hiring the additional input is equal to the value of marginal product VMP, right, which is nothing but equal to price into marginal product of labor. I'm assuming that there's only one uh, variable factor, which is your labor. What is the what is the marginal cost for uh, for the for the entrepreneur or for the producer? That is the cost of hiring an additional unit of labor. Okay, labor is the only variable factor. So the cost of hiring an additional unit of labor is the marginal cost, and that is equal to the wages. Okay, wages are fixed. So you hire. I mean, you're hiring uh, every unit of labor at say rupees 10. So every additional unit of labor will be given, will have to be given rupees 10 only, right? So marginal cost is equal to wages. One thing, wages are also fixed. That's, that's what it is given to you. And at the given wage rate, if you, if you just look at it, at the given wage rate, how much you can supply? You can supply infinite amount of labor, whatever you want to supply, right? Because wages are fixed. They're not increasing. They're not decreasing. So at this at this uh, wage rate, the supply of labor becomes horizontal. Okay. That is your MCN curve. Okay. While VMP curve is downward sloping, as you guys could see. And these are the wages. An equilibrium occurs at the point where VMP equals to W, right? And at this point, L star amount of L star or N star amount of labor is demanded. You guys are with me. So if your N is less than N star, so for example, N1, at this point, VMP is greater than W right the value of marginal product is greater than the cost so it is always better for the entrepreneur to add more workers clear um okay see you can think vmp curve in terms of the revenue that is what is being what is being added to the revenue while this wage curve is being treated as the cost so when n1 is less than n star at n star, both the curves are intersecting. It means that VMP equals to W. That's the point of an employment. Supposedly, you're at N1. At N1, that additional unit of labor is adding more to the revenue. Okay, VMP is more than this cost, right? So then it is adding to the cost. So it is adding more to the revenue than it is adding to the cost. So what is in the interest of the entrepreneur? To add more labor, okay? To keep on adding more labor and, and to do, uh, do that till when? where VMP equals to W, okay? That is till N star amount of labor. And this will continue to do so at N equals to N star or L equals to L star. Well, if the wage rate is W1, then L1 is demanded, right? So in case if your wages are more, okay, let me just change this, right? Like this, well, if wages are more, and VMP curve is same. Earlier, your intersection was here. Now your intersection is here. Earlier, you were employing N naught star. Now you are employing N one star, right? So as your wages will increase from W naught star to W one star, lesser amount of labor is being demanded. This also you know. As wages will increase, what is good for an entrepreneur? He will employ less labor. That's it. Right? Now, so that is the reason you can say that VMP curve can be thought of as the demand curve for labor. That's important. So why do you think that VMP curve is a demand curve for labor? This is the reason that VMP curve is the demand.